Hey you guys. So today I'm going to be doing a sew along with a beautiful fall dress, McCall's 7999. I will be sewing view B. So let's make this dress together, you guys. All right, you guys. So in order to sew up this dress, which is going to be pretty simple, I think this is more of like a beginner pattern because there aren't many pieces and not a whole lot of steps. Uh, so again, view B here. Um, the only notion that you will need is some seam binding, which I have here. Uh, this is Wright's Flexi Lace Hem Tape, and that is just to kind of stabilize our shoulder, um, shoulder seams so that those don't stretch out over time. So that's it for notions. Um, of course, you will need some pins for pinning your fabrics together. Um, for view B, we're only going to be using four pattern pieces. So we'll need piece number one, which is our back, which is pretty long because this is a midi dress. We'll need piece number two, which is our, well, actually no, We'll need piece number three, which is our front, which is actually very long as well. Both of these were cut on the fold. So they are each one piece. And then we have pattern piece five, which is our neck band. And lastly, pattern piece number six, which is our sleeve. So only four pieces to make up this dress. All right, so I chose for this project, this really, really vibrant, lovely, hot pink or fuchsia fabric. Um, this is a polyester spandex fabric. So you can see the stretch on it here. Um, so yeah, choose something that's a knit, something stretchy. Um, so that's that's what I chose. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this is our back piece. I don't know if you guys can see it. I hardly can. I think I'm gonna rewrite with my little heat eraser pins that this is the back. That looks a lot better. So this pin goes away with ironing. Um, so just so I make sure I remember, I like to write on the fabric what the piece is. So let me write on here front. Okay. All right, you guys. So the first thing that we're going to do, um, and this is going to be the right side of my fabric. I like to put a little pin here just so that I remember which side is right side, if both sides look very similar. So right now I have this piece on the wrong side. And let's see, first thing we're gonna do here is stay our shoulder edges um, of the back piece on the wrong side, which is this side. We're gonna use our center, we're gonna use our seam binding over the seam lines and we're gonna baste that. So. What I like to do is get my seam gauge. And of course we're using a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my seam gauge to 5 8 of an inch. And I'm gonna grab my marking tool and I'm just gonna mark my seam line So starting here, I'm just gonna mark that 5 8 inch seam allowance all the way down that shoulder. And so what that allows me to do is to know exactly where to place this seam binding. 
because we are centering it over the seam lines. So now we know exactly where our seam lines are. All right, so let me open up my seam binding. This is very lacy. I've actually never used this before, but um, I like it. It's very, very cute. So I'm just gonna literally center this right over where I did my um, lines for my seam allowance. And then I'm gonna pin this down into place. Okay, so I think we're in good shape there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the excess. And once I stitch this down, I'll come back and trim off the remainder of the excess. So same thing on the other shoulder. The excess there. I love how that looks, that's so pretty. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and baste this down so let me grab my basting needle and some thread i like to use a contrasting thread for basting so that i know i can easily tell the difference between my uh, my real thread and my basting thread so I'm just using this white, white um, polyester thread. And the, the nice thing about this too is that since we have that line already drawn, we can kind of use it as a guide for basting as well. So I'm just literally going to baste right down the center of my seam binding. And we're going to stitch the front which is piece three and the back together at our shoulders in double stitch seams, being careful not to cut the seam binding when trimming and then press the seam toward the back. So let's walk through it. So this is the wrong side. We're going to flip this over. I can actually remove these pins now um, since I've based it down our seam binding that basing is going to hold that into place as long as I don't do too much to it. So I'm going to gently flip this over onto the right side. And I know that because one, I have my pen here to remind me, but two, we did everything else on the wrong side just now. So I'm going to flip that over. I'm going to grab piece number three which again is our front. And I'm going to flip that with the wrong side facing me. So here's our pin on the front. We want these to be right sides facing. So right sides together. I'm gonna put my front on to my back. Get everything nice and laid out. And I'm gonna pin my shoulders here together using the notches that we cut in when we uh, cut out our pattern fabric. And then we're gonna do a double, a double stitch seam. So basically what that means is we're gonna do our five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then we're gonna go about a quarter inch from that stitching and we're gonna stitch another um, row of stitches. And we're gonna be using a zigzag stitch since this is a knit, a knit fabric. Um, it's stretchy, so we need a, a stitch that's going to stretch. That's why we're gonna use a zigzag stitch to do that double uh, stitching. So, all right, so let me go ahead and line up my notches here. All right, guys. So now that we have everything pinned here, I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine, zigzag stitch five eighths of an inch, and then move in a quarter of an inch and do another line of stitching, another row. And then I'll show you guys what that looks like when I come back. 
All right, you guys. So I went ahead and went to the sewing machine. I have my two rows of stitching here. I think you can see it better on this side. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the basting thread just by grabbing the side that was um, knotted and just pulling that out gently. So that just comes out pretty easily. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim off my excess threads as well as the extra seam binding. Um, I like using these really little scissors just so that I don't mistakenly cut something important. These are very accurate and precise. They're Fiskars or Fiskars. I don't know how you pronounce it, but um, they're really good at just getting into those little places and uh, making sure you're really accurate with your cutting. So there we go. Okay, so a little more thread there. All right, so we got everything nice and cleaned up. Um, they did want us to trim off a little bit of this um, seam allowance. So let's see, let me grab my cutting scissors. And they said make sure not to cut the seam binding. So I'm literally going to just cut where I can see. Uh, so the next thing that we are going to do, and it's kind of difficult to do this when you're sewing with a knit because it's so stretchy and it's not really, um, you know, it's not as malleable as a woven fabric, but we're going to go ahead and use our iron and we're going to press the seams toward the back of the dress. So this is the back the part with the seam binding. So we're gonna press our seams this way. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll come back. You guys, I forgot to mention, whenever I'm pressing seams, especially at a shoulder, um, I like to use my seam roll. Um, it just allows me to, let's see, let me grab my fabric. It allows me to lay the fabric right over the seam roll. And that way when I press it, um, it just allows me to kind of isolate that area instead of it laying flat. And then, you know, it's not as precise. So get yourself a seam roll. All right. So again, you can see how nicely that falls to the back. So we are in good shape there. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is to stitch the front and back together at the sides in the same double stitch seams that we did here. Um, so let's see, we're going to leave open below the large circle at the left side, and that's going to be for that slip that's here. So oh, I had to remark my large circle. I just laid my pattern piece over top. Um, I guess the air had already erased the other marking. So here we are. This is our large circle. So I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. I'm going to stitch um, starting from the bottom at the large circle all the way up the side and then from the complete bottom of the right side all the way up to the top of that side. Um, to, to basically sew the back to the front at the side seams. So we're gonna do a 5 8 inch seam allowance with a zigzag stitch. And then after that, to make it a double stitched, I'm gonna move from that first line of stitches about a quarter of an inch over into the seam allowance and do another row of stitches. So now I'm just pinning the side seams. So when I get to the point of that large circle, um, what I like to do is to put two pins in place. That way, when I get to the sewing machine and I start sewing, I remember where to stop and I don't go any further than my double pinned area. So, all right, so that's that side. 
I'm gonna go ahead and pin the other side the same way. All right, so now we're ready to go to the sewing machine. All right, guys, so we're we're clipping the front seam. So when we find that left side with the large circle, we're just going to clip right here, three eighths inch above that circle. So that's as far as I can go before I get to my first row of stitches. And then I'm going to stitch from here all the way up for my second row. I already did my second row, so I had to rip out that, that part of it, but I'm just gonna go from here to here, making sure that I catch um, into my first part of stitches so that, um, so that that's reinforced. All right, you guys. So I went ahead and stitched both sides. The left side here, I have my large circle and that's still open from the circle all the way to the bottom. Um, so the next thing after you have done your double stitching is to press my seams to the back and then I'll be back. All right, y'all. So I have um, pressed my seams toward the back of the dress. So now that that's done, the next step is to move on to our collar. So I'm gonna put the dress aside for now. And I'm gonna grab my collar piece. The next step is to work on my neck band. So this is what I have here, piece number five. Again, this is the right side. I know that because of my pin. So I'm gonna stitch the ends of my neck band together. So right sides facing, I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'm going to pin the sides here together. Everything lines up really nicely, which is great. So I'll just add one more pin in the center just to be safe. I, I think I'm an over pinner, but I'm okay with that. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch five eighths of an inch across this side of my neck band. And then once I do that, I'll come back. All right, so now that I have that stitched, I went ahead and pressed this seam. I'm going to trim off the excess um, seam allowance here, because once we turn this neck band, uh, once we fold it, we don't want a lot of bulkiness once we do this. Uh, so I just trim down a little bit of that uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is with wrong sides together, fold the neck band along the fold line and press. So the fold line for this neck band is pretty much right down the middle. So I'm literally just going to turn this um, wrong sides facing. So our seam should be on the inside here. That's why we cut it, the seam allowance, so that it's not extremely bulky. And I'm just going to line up my notches here and my notches here. And once I've done that, we're going to press it. So I'm going to go ahead and get that pin. Right, so now that I have that pin, I'm going to take it to the iron, make sure you be careful. Um, I'm just gonna kind of lightly press around just the crease of this and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my neck band pressed. I have it pinned. So the next thing I'm going to do is pin my neck band to my neck edge, matching my centers. Um, and we're going to base that, stretching the neck band to fit if we need to. Uh, so let me go ahead and grab my dress again. There's my dress. 
So we want to make sure that our dress is on the right side. So let me go ahead and turn my dress to the right side here. And of course we have, let's see, this is the back with the higher neckline. This is our front again, and here's our neckband. So it's also helpful when you're cutting out, um, you're putting your notches on to clip uh, the front, center front and center back so that you know kind of where to line the uh, neckband up when you're um, putting it on. So we're gonna flip this to having our raw edges facing up, upwards like this. So this is my folded edge and these are my raw edges. And this is the back seam right here. So I'm gonna actually, right sides facing, place that seam right there where the center notch is in my um, dress. So I'm gonna pin that and then um, I flipped it because you kind of have to, it's kind of weird um, working with the collar band, but you get a feel for it. So now that I've pinned that, again, raw edges of everything are facing upwards. Right sides, right side of the dress, of course, right side of the band. And we're just gonna continue on um, again, stretching is needed. So I'm matching up this notch on my collar band, my, my um, neck band with the notch on the dress, pinning that. The same with the notch on the other side. And this just kind of gives you some spatial awareness to make sure that um, you're distributing your collar band evenly. And again, remember, you're able to stretch this to fit as needed. So I'm just gonna kinda use my fingers to stretch that collar band, that neck band, as I pin. There we go. I have my neck band pinned to the right side of my dress. Make sure it's the right side. You should have seams on the inside because once you sew this, <laughs> it's there. I mean, you can seam rip it, but you don't wanna waste that time. So um, there we go. Now that I have that done, I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm going to um, pull this band as I go to make sure that it's stretching and laying flat along the collar of the dress. I first need to baste this collar. So let me grab my basting thread and needle. I'm gonna go to the machine and stitch this collar band on, neck band on. But okay, so I went ahead and uh, double stitched my neck band onto the neck of the dress. Now I'm just working on removing that white basting stitching. Oh, it's kind of shaky. All right, so I think that's it for the basting stitches. So now I'm gonna just trim all these extra threads So now we're gonna press the seam toward the dress. So 
this is how the neck band is once it's attached to the dress from the outside. And we're literally going to press this seam down toward the dress. All right, guys, so I turned my dress inside out to um, press that down, but now it's pressed down nicely. I don't really like to trim too much seam if I don't have to, but I'm just gonna use my hand underneath this band to make sure I'm not cutting into my dress. I'm just gonna trim off just a touch. Next up, we're gonna move on to our sleeves. So go ahead and grab your sleeve pieces. All right, so I have my sleeves here. Again, I pinned the right sides so that I know which side is the right side. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is stitch the sleeve seam in a double stitch, uh, double stitch seam. So I'm gonna leave my pins in place for now. I'll take them out later, but I'm going to do right sides facing for my sleeve. I'm gonna pin and then I'm gonna stitch the length of the sleeve from the top to the bottom. Um, stitching line, stitch, and then be back. All right, guys, so now that I have um, stitched, double stitched my sleeves, I'm gonna go in and retrieve my pins because I don't need those anymore. Be careful not to stick yourself. All right, and so again, I'm just gonna trim my extra threads off. All right, so next step is to press the seam toward the back. Now, how do we know which, which is the back? So I'm sure most of you know this, but with sleeves, the side with one notch is your front and the side with two notches is your back. So um, in this case, this is the one notch. So we're gonna press our seams toward the two notch side. Um, but first, before I do that, I'm just gonna, again, trim down just a little bit of this seam allowance. I'm gonna press my seams and then I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I have my sleeves pressed out. Next thing we're going to do is with right sides together, we're gonna to pin our sleeves into the armhole of our dress. Uh, we're gonna match any circles, any notches, and any seams that we have to the dress. And then we're going to baste that we're gonna stitch it and then we're gonna stitch it again, that double stitching that we've been doing this whole time. Um, and then we're gonna trim close to the stitching and press our seam allowances flat. So I'm gonna grab my dress and then we'll start pinning these sleeves on. All right, guys, so I have my dress. I'm gonna start by flipping my sleeves onto the right side. Cause again, we're pinning these right sides facing with the dress. Um, you can see with pressing just how nicely that seam lies on the outside. All right, so we've got our sleeves right side out. Now, let's see, we're going to want to turn our dress wrong side out. 
turn our dress wrong side out. Yes, there we go. So we want our dress wrong side out, so we should be looking at the seams on our dresses. We're gonna take a sleeve and we're gonna feed it through that armhole. Follow me here. If you have to rewind it, that's, that's okay. Um, so again, sleeve is right side out, dress is wrong side out, and we're feeding the sleeve through so that we're actually pinning the right side of the sleeve to the right side of the dress. So I'm gonna start by first making sure and it's not the right sleeve because this should be two notches and it's one. So I'm gonna put that one aside and grab my other sleeve. So that means this one is the right sleeve for this side. So make sure that you match that up first. So now we see that my seams will line up and then we have two notches. So I know that that's the right sleeve. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pinning. Going to move on to side two and get our second sleeve pinned in. So once we have those sleeves pinned in, we're gonna go ahead and baste those into place. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other sleeve and then we'll be ready to start sewing. All right, so we're done with our basting. I'm gonna take this to the machine. Again, I'm gonna stretch the dress as needed to fit the sleeve. Um, and then I'm gonna do a double stitch and then come back. Okay, you guys, so I have both of my sleeves sewn on, um, double stitched hem double stitch seam on both of those. So they want me to press the seams in toward the sleeve. So um, I'll just press it pretty much going into the sleeve. And then first I'm gonna trim some of this excess seam allowance and then I'll come back. All right guys, so both sleeves are on pressed. We are pretty much done here. Um, only thing to do is to turn in our sleeve hem and then to turn up the bottom hem of this dress. So for our sleeve, we're going to turn up our five eighths of an inch. So let me go ahead and turn this sleeve back out both sleeves to the inside. So I'm gonna turn up 5 eighths of an inch and I just kind of like to start, since it's a round surface, I just like to roll up um, just any length and then I get my seam gauge and I start to adjust it until I get to five eighths of an inch turned up. So a little more, well, a little less rather. And yeah, that looks pretty much spot on. 
I flip it to the other side just to make sure it's correct going all the way around. So I'm happy with that. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to baste this close to the fold here. And then once I have that basted, I'm going to turn in one fourth inch on the raw edge. And then I'm going to press that and baste it. And then I'm going to turn this to the right side and I'm going to top stitch this in place. So let me go ahead and put a few pins in here just to hold it into place while I baste. I'm going to go ahead and turn in a half inch, which, you know, I could be very precise, but I'm just going to kind of eyeball this and just kind of, if it will stay, turn in that raw edge. I'm pretty much turning it in to be... Um, to where my basting thread is. So now that I've got that sleeve turned in under the raw edge, I'm going to go over to my next sleeve and do the same thing. Now that that's done, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and baste at our um, turn under point here. That way, when we stitch on the right side, we know exactly where to stitch. I'm going to take this to the uh, ironing board real quick and press those cuffs into place. And then I'm going to stitch on the right side, top stitching at this point, not the cuff, but this point, um, the second row of stitches that we just did. And then I'll be back. All right, y'all. So. I went ahead and stitched down, top stitched my uh, sleeve hems in place. I'm just going to remove any excess thread and then I'm going to take out my basting stitches as well. All right, so we've got our sleeve hems done. Now we're going to move on to our last step. Well, not our last step, because we still have to uh, do a nice rolled hem on our 
slit, our side slit. All right, so onto our slit. We're gonna turn up our 5 8 inch seam allowance. And we're gonna basically stitch that down all the way up. When we get to our circle here, we're gonna go 1 4th inch above the circle. So I'm going to go ahead and start to turn up my 5 8 inch hem. So in order to do that, what I like to do is do a 5 8 inch, press that, and then turn that raw edge right into where I pressed and roll again, pin that off, and then stitch. So we're going to stitch all the way up into our slit. Once we get to our um, area above our circle, we're gonna pivot across and then down the other side of the slit all the way to the bottom. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll come back. All right, y'all, so I just finished sewing my hem, my rolled hem into my slit, as you can see here. I pivoted about a half an inch above the, the slit, and that's how it turned out. I actually um, used a straight stitch just because um, I think it's neater when you're doing it in, in areas like this that don't necessarily need to stretch with your body. But it's up to you if you want to just go ahead and use your zigzag stitch for that as well. So. Now that we've got that done, our very last step is to turn up our bottom hem. So we're gonna turn up one and a fourth inch on the bottom hem. We're going to baste close to the fold once we do that. So I'm gonna measure that out, but then I'm gonna baste close to the fold here, once I turn up that one and a fourth inch. Then I'm gonna turn in a fourth inch on my raw edge, kind of like we did with the sleeve, as well as this part, the slit. And then once we do that, we're gonna baste that in place, close to where we turned under. And then we're gonna end off by pressing that and then we're gonna top stitch on the right side our hem and then we'll be done so i'm gonna do that and then i'll be right back all right y'all so that's it i just finished stitching my bottom hem so that's all nice and done now i'm just gonna press out the entire dress including that fresh hem and that is the end of our dress, you guys. So let's take a look. Ooh. So let's take a look at the final product. 